When we think back on great inventions of mankind, we think about the wheel and the radio and things like that, but we somehow overlook the simple mirror. I think that no other invention has really transformed the way that we perceive the world, and more importantly, the way that we perceive ourselves. Daniel Rosen has spent a lot of his career building what he calls mirrors, but they're not what you think. My work centers around the idea of participation, of interaction, where the viewer becomes a part of the piece. When a person stands in front of one of my art pieces, they immediately understand the interface to it. They will see themselves reflected. There's no learning curve. There's no question about what is the contents of the piece. The contents of the piece is you. Rosen's made mirrors from wooden tiles, trash, fans, even pom-poms each meticulously designed, built, and programmed to reflect the viewer's form. I remember getting the idea that I could create a mechanical display by taking anything and just tilting it up and down towards or away from the light. Just like maybe my hand is doing right now, it is bright when it tilts up, it is dark when it tilts down, and I thought I could take anything and create a display out of it. But making that idea into a working mirror required a lot of research, practice, and patience. It was just out of graduate studies where I learned how to do some basic electronics and some programming, but definitely I wasn't prepared to create a complex piece that required controlling cameras and moving close to a thousand motors. So I had to go and teach myself how to do these things. The first project he attempted, a tile mirror with 835 pieces made of pine. It was featured in Wired 20 years ago. I had to learn how to fabricate all the wooden tiles, how to move all the motors, and how to do the video capture. I started with a wooden mirror which uses a video camera and just pixelates what it sees. But if you only have about a thousand pixels and a person is standing in front of a noisy background, you'll hardly see anything. So I always had to put like a white wall behind the person, which is not that difficult, but if you're trying to show your art in an office environment or in a museum, that's an imposition. And that was just the first of many challenges Rosen had to overcome. The wooden mirror was made out of 835 servo motors. These are cheap and very easy to control and have a very nice sound, they hum. So I was very happy and used them for quite a few projects over the first five years of my practice. The problem with servo motors is that they are made out of plastic typically and they're meant to fly, you know, model airplanes for 10 minutes. They're not meant to be working 24 hours a day moving a lot, so they fail. Now he uses stepper motors, which are all metal and don't have any plastic gears, which are easy to break. But they are tougher to program. Some of my newer pieces actually don't use cameras at all. They use motion sensors or laser sensors to actually sense the people directly. Surprisingly, it's the lo-fi aspect of his projects that are the most difficult. When I first created the wooden mirror, it took me a year to actually build it. I had to cut all the tiles, get the motors, learn how to control them. So the electronics and the mechanics and the fabrication took me a year. Then it took me an afternoon to program the computer to actually activate it. Rosen still does everything himself, from designing, wiring, programming, to building. If there is any challenge involved in these pieces, it's the multiplicity. If I do something one, I actually usually need to do it a thousand times. So controlling one motor typically is pretty easy, but wiring and controlling a thousand is where actually the challenge comes. But Rosen doesn't even know if they'll work until he's finished all the building, all the programming, and finally plugs it in for the first time. You need to actually program a generative algorithm that will move a hundred or a thousand pixels to create that kind of image or animation. That's not always very simple because usually I'm not doing that on a full computer. I'm programming an Arduino board or some other microcontroller with no graphical interface and no real way to actually prototype and see what the result is going to look like until I actually have it working on the piece itself. Over the years, he's added in transitions, textures like this effect, which he calls blooming, or this one, raining. And why has Rosen spent years of his life creating these intricate installations, meticulously cutting, sanding, and wiring each piece? The way that we perceive ourselves is in very stark contrast to the way that other people see us. 
And when you gaze into a mirror, that divide collapses. You see yourself exactly as other people see you. It's a very emotionally charged moment. And that is a moment that actually defines a lot of my art. The basic concept for each mirror is similar, but every new material brings unique challenges. I'm interested in this idea of perception. How do we see images? In my mechanical pieces, it means chopping up an image to pixels. These pixels are typically square, but they don't have to be. In trash mirror, they are just all kinds of shapes. And then I have sometimes round pixels, but they're always pixels, which means there are a unit of information that can be dark or bright. In my piece, Angles Mirror, I tried a different approach. The piece is made out of 900 kind of indicators, almost like speedometers in your car, that can just change the angle that they are pointing. So they're not getting brighter or darker in any way. They're not really pixels. And the challenge there was, if I only can change the rotation orientation of 900 indicators, can I really create an image out of that? And it turns out that the way that our eyes and our brains see the world are actually very, very sensitive to orientation. So actually by just pointing to different directions, we can definitely tell apart the foreground, the background, a person moving, or even create pretty simple graphics and animations. His latest project is a commission for ASCAP, the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. It's made of wood and brass, materials traditionally used to make musical instruments, as well as mirrored steel and Rosen's trying something new. Even though I've been using the sound and enjoying the sound of my installations for many years, this is the first time that I'm actually trying to design the piece so it will produce sonic output. The piece is made out of 768 tiles of different materials that can tilt up and down. The little tiles can actually travel all the way to the end of their motion and do a little click and according to the material, the wood, the brass, or the steel, they make a slightly different sound. In order to be able to create faster exchanges, I divide the piece into columns, and together they can hopefully create a much more rapid staccato or accelerando or any other kind of musical concept that we're trying to bring forth. Ultimately, it's the viewer's experience that drives him to constantly create and innovate through the medium of mirrors. My pieces are very boring when there's not a person in front of them. If you go to a gallery and it's empty, and you look at one of my pieces, if it's a screen piece, it'll be empty. If it's an interactive mechanical piece, it will be still. But the minute a person stands in front of it, it takes your image, and I think that maybe it takes more than your image, that maybe it's capturing something about your soul, and displaying it back to you. Together we are creating the art piece, and the piece would not exist without me and without the viewer.